This is everything that comes, all the contents of the resistance rail, the deluxe package, and I'm gonna show you how to set it up. These are all the pieces, and we're gonna talk about each one of them individually, and then I'll show you how we can set it up. So here's everything. The first part I wanna show you, these are your cover plates for the base screw. These are your jam nuts, letter D. As you saw, these, joists, these screws here are letter N. Your cover screws, uh, or the cover plates, I should say, are M. You got your base plates here for the floor. Those go on the floor. These are all your connector pieces. These are all, bring all the poles together, those long poles right there. They're gonna all come together. Here's the bolts for them, for each one, the bolts and the nuts. Over here, you have your top plates. This is the part that goes on the ceiling. You can see with the top plate, it has rubber on the top. And that's for that reason, couple holes here, which will accept these joist screws, letter P. These are your horizontal rails. You can see they have the covers on them, which makes them different than your vertical poles. These go on the horizontal, these go on the vertical. These horizontals connect with those connector pieces. Everything comes together and these are your extender pieces, which will get you from eight to nine foot. This is the resistance rail all laid out. It's gonna come in a box, of course. The first thing I would do is get it all out of the box and lay it out like this. You'll also have an inventory sheet that will lay, have all the labels with the C, the F, the H, and so forth, telling you exactly what you should have. Make sure you have it all before you start and you're ready to go. So now we're gonna actually set up the product. The first thing you have to do, obviously, is determine where you want the product. In this case, it's in a garage, my garage, and we're gonna set it up right in here. So the first thing you have to do, obviously you're gonna need a ladder and you're gonna need a tape measure and you're gonna to have to measure your ceiling heights. Now, one thing I noticed that I hadn't noticed before is garages are built such that they slope down. So your ceiling is gonna be a little lower here as opposed to five feet away where the other vertical pole will be. It'll be a few inches higher at that point. So we get all the way up here. This is the best way I've found to measure. As you go from the top, get up here and then you just measure right up to the top. And this is 112 inches or basically, uh, let's see, nine foot, essentially four inches, five inches, excuse me. So nine foot, five inches or 112 inches, which is easier for me. So that'll be where my first top plate goes. And then five feet away, you don't want to go more than five. You could go six, but not a lot more. It's basically, it has to be about five feet because those poles, the horizontal poles are only seven foot long. So if it's five foot, you got a foot going out each side or even a five and a half is fine. Then you'd have like eight inches out of each side. Point is, is that it can't be a whole lot more than five and certainly can't be seven feet apart because the poles themselves are seven feet. That makes sense? So anyway, then I measure down here because like I said, it's different because the garage floor slants down. So this is gonna be a little bit more than 112, which is what we first measured. So right here, we're gonna measure this. And it's, well, it's like 113. So it's not a whole lot different, but nonetheless, you're right, at a, you're right at a little over nine feet. So the poles are set up, the extender pieces are set up so that we can do that. So we know we gotta have at least pretty darn close to 112 inches. That's the first thing and you know where you're gonna put it. We know where we're gonna put it because we're gonna put it right here in the garage. So these poles are seven foot. We know we have to get to 112 inches. You may be thinking, well, how much is that? Pretty darn close to nine foot, okay? It's actually nine foot, five inches. So I'm gonna set my tape up at nine foot, or 112 inches, basically, okay? Because I know I have to get to that. Now there is a little bit of adjustment in the screw itself. This screw is like nine inches long, so you got a little adjustment there. So here we are, we have our two verticals, that's letter J, the two vertical poles. These are important, you'll notice that they both have these holes that are 12 inches apart, which will accept the extender pieces. Now we need our bolts and our nuts. Here's bag G and E we have right here. And we're gonna use these to connect the extenders, B, 
with the vertical pieces. So here we go. Remember, I have to get to 112 inches in this case. Now, not every case is gonna be a little different, but definitely this case. So take your extender. This is the top part of the extender. You can see there's no hole at the very bottom of the bottom. There's a definitely a hole at the top. It's only an inch away. So then we're gonna stick these in here. Remember, you're gonna put two bolts. So here we are, we have the extender piece in here. We're gonna take the bolts, stick them through, and this bolt, stick them through. This is what makes it extremely strong because you have two strong bolts coming through here, 12 inches apart. So it really is an extender that's strong. And you know, of course, everything's made out of steel. Um, so anyway, so we're gonna just hand tighten these. And you can see that we're still about six or seven inches shy. But remember, we have that base screw, which is gonna go in the bottom of these. That's kind of the key to this whole system. It's a jack screw expansion strengthening. So we have that screw and it's about nine inches. So that'll make up the difference here once we stand these up. We're gonna do the same for the other one. Let's go ahead and get this one ready. Put this one in here. Again, that's the top because it's only an inch away and that's what goes onto this. Those will fit on there. You'll see it in the future. So anyway, we're gonna load this in here. And, uh, okay, we've got a little hold up there, but we got it now. Essentially, let me back that up. That's where we're at, we're good. So here's your, your bolts here. This bolt goes through like this. Line them up. Okay, good. And we'll put this one in here. Okay, so there we go, we got those. Put the nuts on here, hand tightening. Okay, and then this one. And again, you can kind of see that it's right out to the end. We almost, we're getting to that 112 inches that we gotta make up. So at this point, what I would do is I would start by thinking about putting the extender pieces on, or yeah, the, the connector pieces, excuse me, letter C on, and the stems in along with the jam nut. So as you notice, we still have two bolts left and two of the nuts. And so what I do with these is it helps me later when I'm getting, when I get up there, that these will actually be ready for me. So you'll see what I'm talking about in a little bit, but I just want them to be with me when I get up there. So I'm just gonna stick these through there at this point. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna get, get the vertical poles prepared so that it's all ready to go. So when I set this thing up into vertical, everything's on there and I didn't forget to put anything on. So these are, as we know, as we've already said, the connector pieces, they have a C on them. So here's the connector pieces, as I said, we're gonna put those on at this time. You can see that these all, all these screws here require an Allen wrench, which will come with the product. Uh, that's something you won't have to go out and get, but they come with the product. So here we go. We're gonna put this one on here and you're actually gonna be putting this one on as well. You're putting two on because if you remember, we have two horizontal pieces that are gonna to connect to that. As you notice, these have two screws and that just adds to the strength of the product, which is really pretty exciting for us. We really like that idea. So the extender piece actually goes between these two nuts. So I'm gonna loosen this one up, even though we already put it in there because it's just, you know, it's just hand tightened, so we're cool. I'm gonna lift this up and put it right between the two nuts. And I'm gonna put this nut back in there and refasten it just hand tight. So that's one extender piece. And we're gonna do the same thing over here in a moment, but this one comes up, it can go pretty much anywhere. And what we're gonna do is just tighten these lightly, lightly, just so they don't go sliding down when we raise this into vertical. And you can just tighten one. It'll, it'll hold with one, okay? So just a light tighten like that, all right? So then what we'll do is we'll grab the other two extenders and do the same thing to the other vertical. Okay, or these are connectors, I call them extenders, sorry. Connector pieces. So here we go, going in like this and in like this. You notice the screws up top so it's easy to tighten when we get to that point. And then the ones on the side, as I already said, it's 
we have two of them, so it's really strong. And we felt that that was really important for the product, that it'd be very strong. Okay, again, we're coming up here. We got a bolt in the way, but we can remove that. No problem, no problem at all. And we just go between the two nuts and that'll be our top uh, horizontal rail. There we go, get that through there. And we just hand tighten this and we'll lightly tighten this so that it won't come falling down. Okay, so that's that. The next thing I want to do is I want to go with the base uh, screw and that's these right here. Their letter is N and we're going to have to have D which is the jam nut. So at this point we're going to actually make the pole a little bit longer because as I said before these are like nine inches and we still need about six inches to make up that 112. Again here's the jam nuts. Now jam nuts are just what they say. We tighten those at the very, very last so nothing moves. And these just basically go in the bottom. Now there's a, there's a, what they call a bung in the bottom of this, which will come that way. And it's got threads in there, which accept these threads. And that is really the key to the whole process of getting this, uh, this jack screw expansion as we've talked about. So these go in here like so, and they tighten up. And then this will go on here Eventually, it'll just tighten these up and that'll be the jam nut. Of course, we'll adjust that accordingly and the same thing over here. And if you notice now, actually our poles, our verticals are longer than the 112. That's okay because we can always turn, push this all the way in and it takes a little bit of time to get it all the way in there. So I'm not going to spend that time right now. We'll get it to where it needs to be in a bit. So there we go. You can see that we're way, we're up to 112, even beyond. So in order to get less or where we really need to be, these have to come in, which just makes it that much stronger if this is further in the pole, if that makes sense. So at this point, I think the one thing it's easy to forget to do is to put these cover plates on. And it makes a difference because it makes it more attractive, the product. That's pretty much what these serve is just covering up the screw at the end. So what I do is I put these on and simply put a little piece of tape on them so that they don't slide down when I raise it into vertical. They're out of the way until I, until I want to use them. And I just pick, pick a little piece of tape. Doesn't matter what kind of tape you use, obviously. It's just a matter of holding it while you're putting this into vertical. So that's kind of what I do there and it's really, wonderful when you get to the point where you realize oh my gosh it's up and I haven't put these on and then you're in trouble you got to take it all the way down if you want to put your plates on so I put them on now in a temporary fashion okay so at this point we've already determined where our joist is in the ceiling um, and, and these will actually run parallel with the with the, up here on the joist right along the top of the joist um, and with the way we fasten them are with these lag screws here which is p and so i'm going to go up there as you remember i put the bolt in here and this is what connects to the top piece of this this is where this goes in with the bolt going through okay it's rubber on the top it's got holes so that you can uh, put those screws up in there so let's go up and put the screws let's go ahead and put the plate on up so here we go So we need two of the lag screws to go up here. All right, I already have it marked in regards to this, so we're good to go. This should go right about there. I'll get it started a little bit so it'll hold it. Remember, I'm right on the joist, so that, you know, obviously, if you're gonna be tightening this up, you, don't, you wanna hit right on the joist. Oh, going the wrong way. So that's that one. And the other one looks like it's already lined up too. So that's good. So we have two of these. Pretty much you would have to drill the hole ahead of time so that these screws will go, which will come. You just drill a hole in there about the size of the screw. And then you put your piece on there. If you have yourself 
An impact drill, that's a different story, but here we are. And so that goes right up in there. It's right on the joist. So now we're ready to accept the vertical pull. So that's what we're gonna do next. So here we are, as you, as you can see, if you look closely, we're actually beyond 112. That just means that we have adjustment here. And I take my screwdriver and there's a hole right here. It, this screwdriver is like perfect in terms of the diameter. You really need that kind of a screwdriver for this process. And then you simply just screw it in, it, you know, and it, they, they just go right on in. They're really machined well. That is these, these uh, base screws are really machined well. So they just go right on in. We want to give ourselves enough room to clear that little stem up there on the top. So we don't want it to be exactly 112. We probably want it to be more like about 100 and maybe 10, 9, 8, somewhere in there because we can always take it out more. Now if this gets in your way, just keep it out of your way because once that goes up to the top, it'll jam and it won't, it won't go any further. That's why it's a jam nut. So anyway, that's pretty much it. I can measure this at this point and see where I'm at. That should be right at the end of this, of course, and it is. And you can see 112 is like right here. So we got ourselves about three inches of play here and that's important when you're putting it up because that stem itself coming off there is about two and a half inches. So you gotta give yourself a little room to get it up on there and get that bolt through there. And that's what we're gonna do right now. So here we are. Um, what I'm gonna do at this point, I wanna point out that the joist is already screwed in. As you know, we put those lag screws in there, joist screws, excuse me, have it all right on the, uh, the joist that's there. At this point, we wanna take this bolt out Okay, so we're taking it out. We're gonna set it right here because we're gonna need it in just a minute. And I'm gonna get the vertical and put it up on there. And also one other thing is we gotta get that letter H bottom plate. So here we are, here is the bottom plate. This is kind of a cool little plate because it's all steel, but on the bottom it's rubber. And that's great because if you have different floorings other than this concrete flooring like carpet, even your wood floors, the pergos and all that kind of stuff, no problem. Uh, be a little careful if it's tile, because you want to put it in the middle of the tile. You don't want to crack your tile, but I don't think that's going to happen. So anyway, here it is. We go basically as best you can from eyeball, because that's where the pole is going to be. So at this point, I'm going to grab the vertical pole and we're going to start setting it up. So now we have our vertical pole. We know it's really close, like 100 and, I don't know, about 109 inches. So it's less than 112, which we got to get to, which we've already established. Taking you over here. Now remember, this is heavy. This is all steel. So, you know, I know you guys are mostly athletes who are going to be dealing with this, so it's okay. Anyway, you see that top hole? It's going to go right up here. I'm going to put it right on there. The beauty is, I don't need anybody to help me. I can just put it right there and get up on the ladder. So here I go. I'm going to get up on the ladder here and get my bolt. So I get my bolt here. Now i got to raise this up to get to the hole and I stick the hole, stick it through there. And the beauty is, is once you do that, it starts to plumb itself. In other words, you find out exactly it's straight up and down at that point. So we have the bolt in, but don't forget to put your nut in, which you won't. You'll go back up there and it's just a matter of uh, you know, tightening everything up once it's in place, but it's there. These are hand tightened, these are hand tightened, this is just semi tightened, everything is hanging there, and the more this hangs, it's just gonna plumb up. It'll be straight up and down, which is kind of kind of sweet, which you'll see in a moment here. So you can see how far off I was on my plate. If you look down here, you have to line this up now where you get it right about there. And we'll just let that kind of sit there for a minute and kind of plumb up. One thing I didn't mention, which is really kind of important, and this is going to be included with the product, this is a magnet. I think they call it an earth magnet, but basically it's going to find the nails that are in the drywall that are into the joist. And if you can't find your joist, you just use one of these, and like I say, it connects right there. And you can see that is right in line with the joist that we lined up on. I'm sure even if I went over here, I could find it again. And you can, there it is. So there you go. You got it both ways. You know the joist is right there, no question. Now that this is plumb, 
course, we'll check it with a level in a minute, but now that this is plumb, we're ready to just basically move this exactly or as close to exactly as you can, and then you can start screwing it down. And you just, now you remember, there's like eight inches, nine inches up in here, so you got plenty to play with at nine foot. We'll get this as close as we can. And uh, now you're almost there. It's in that little hole, and you just screw it down into that hole as far as you possibly can. Now this is important what I'm about ready to say. When you tighten this up with this screwdriver, you really want to crank it down. You don't want to play. This has to be really tight. And you'll see me tightening it down. So here we are, you stick the screwdriver through and you essentially start to tighten it. Now before I go on. So here we have our earth magnet, which also has a level and it Obviously a magnet going on steel, it's going to really go on there. And I can see that it's good and plumb, and then you would want to check it this way. Either way, you want it to be straight up and down. But like I said, if you put it in at the top and give it a moment, it'll plumb itself. So it'll be nice and straight. So at this point, we're going to tighten it up. Now here's a screwdriver that fits this hole just about perfect. Um, and we're going to start to tighten it up like that. Now remember, you really want to tighten this. This is not a game. You want to tighten it really strong and it can handle it because it's all steel. Steel on the top, the whole pole steel, the stem is steel, everything is steel. Even the plate that it's sitting on is steel. So it's really, really strong. And if you have to, you know, get it where you need to get it, you're going to hear your ceiling probably start to give a little bit, but it won't, it won't. The joists will hold it and you'll be fine. And just tighten it up. Don't play around. Don't get it just half tight. Get it really tight. Okay, so that's basically it. Give it one more little thing. And then you take your, your jam nut and you take it all the way up to the bottom of the bung or the bottom of the pole here. You know you were turning this way. Put your pipe wrench on there. You turn it the way it's got to go. You hold it from moving and you just basically Tighten it up like this. Sometimes you have to adjust a little bit and then it's good and tight. At this point, you're grateful you tape this on here because you can take that tape off, slides down and cover it, voila. The one thing we haven't done, even though the pole's good and tight, we still have to tighten up the bolts that we put in. Remember, we just hand tightened them. So here we go, we're gonna go up with your ladder and you're gonna just tighten these up, okay? Okay. You gotta kinda of hold both sides because otherwise they're gonna move on you. So you just tighten them up. Don't be afraid to get them good and tight. Here's a couple more that we have to tighten. That's got that tight. That's what's holding the extender piece. Here's another one that's holding the extender piece. Get that one good and tight. That's good and tight. Now that extender piece is on there. These aren't tight yet, but that's okay. We'll get to that. So what we did, we, you know we, we set this one up. We did the exact same thing for this pole. Now they're five foot apart, five foot six inches apart, which is fine because remember, the, the horizontal bars are a seven foot, so we have to have a little bit extending out as we go through the connector pieces. As I said before, the connector pieces we just put on lightly. No problem, you can see they're a little bit offline. That's okay, don't get shook. We're just gonna loosen them up. This is your, take the Allen wrench, which is included. Put this down, you know, maybe, I don't know, about here, wherever you want them, that's the beauty of it. But don't tighten them up real tight, just a little bit. Just a little bit. We're not quite ready to really jam them up. We will, but not quite yet. Now this one we're gonna line up. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can see the difference between the two bottoms. You just tighten it up a little. Now they're both on the same side. Same thing we'll do with the top ones, but for right now, let's put in the bottom horizontal rail. Here's our horizontal rail. It's seven foot long, as I said. These poles are approximately five and a half feet apart. That's where we're gonna do now. We didn't tighten them up real tight. 
And there's a reason for that because we want to be able to move them while we're getting this in here. And that's kind of nice. You can just move them a little bit, get them right on in there, and then you can line them up basically six or seven inches out each side. And that's pretty nice. And at this point, if you want to, you can tighten this all up. But I think what I'm gonna do first is go to the top rail. So the bottom connectors are in, and now we're gonna deal with the top connectors. So we're going up the ladder a little bit. I'm gonna put these connectors, as you notice, the bottom one is facing away from me, and the top one is gonna be facing towards me. It's already there, everything's fine with that one. But I do have to turn that one. You can see it's going the wrong way. So let's go down here, no problem. Step up on here. These aren't even that tight. So I can actually turn them by hand and just put it right there. I would not tighten it at this point. You can see that they're about level. You can see the difference between where the nuts are and down. So we're pretty much good there. And again, if you take a close look, you can see the extenders on this side, or the connector, pardon me, is on this side and the connector is going out on that side, just opposite each other. So here we grab the other horizontal and you can basically slide it in here and it'll move so you can kind of slide it in and then get it all the way in and then go the other way. Oops, a little bit of a problem there, but no big deal because they're not real tight yet. Okay, and at this point, it's time to tighten everything up. I would probably start with these on here. Get these tightened up. And again, like I said, an Allen wrench will be included. That's the exact size you need for this this particular tightening. And this is all you would need the Allen wrench really for is the tightening of the connector pieces. And you can tighten this since you're here. Kind of nice to have the ladder so you can get up here a little higher, make sure it's really tight. And then you go around and tighten them all. So that's it. We got the resistance rail all installed. It's extremely strong. It's all steel. It comes together with four poles. The only difference if you get the, if you get the standard product versus the deluxe, you don't get this particular rail. However, having said that, it does come with the connector pieces so you can move the bar accordingly. But with the deluxe, you get everything here. You have tons of space to work. I mean, we could have moved this into the middle even more, but we got it five feet from the walls. It's right outside this door. Anytime I want to come out here, I can work out for five, 10 minutes and do anything I want. I can use the product itself to do push-ups on, do tricep work. You can move this up, get underneath of it and do things. It's fantastic. So included with the resistance rail are basically four tools. The Allen wrench, the two boxed in wrenches, which will basically be dealing with these nuts. And you're gonna get the, the stud finder, which actually has a level on it for the plumbing of the pole. In addition, we recommend that you have a drill. You also have tape measure, should be about 25 foot tape measure at least. And then you have your pipe wrench and your screwdriver to tighten that bottom screw. Those don't come with it. Those are what we recommend in order to do the job.